On Sunday, December the 7th, 1942, 1941, the radio, I was sitting, I was sitting at the kitchen table building model airplanes. And I heard over the radio that Pearl Harbor had been bombed secretly. Well, first, I didn't know what, uh, where Pearl Harbor was on it. I didn't know uh, it was one of my, one of the, our uh, uh, naval bases, but I soon found out about it on it. So that made me mad. On it. And I thought maybe, well, maybe Germany is uh, uh, in, uh, involved in that too, because uh, my father was in World War I and he told me all about uh, France and, uh, and Germany and that, he said that that was going to be our next uh, uh, battle with them. So I figured that, but further on, on the, listening to the uh, radio, I figured uh, it was a lot different than what I had uh, envisioned. So when uh, I said, well, I'm going to have to help our country and, and fight too. So, because my father went in quite early and so I figured, well, I was going to uh, join some uh, military outfit and see if I could uh, help with, it, with uh, the country. I tried to uh, enlist in other things uh, when I went to the post office and I saw the beautiful uh, blues that the uh, Marines were wearing. I said, boy, I want one of those. And says, I, they're going to give me one of those. So I tried and uh, so that was really one of the main reasons that I got into the Marine Corps rather than uh, get uh, uh, the Navy or the Army because I thought it was a lot better uh, uh, recruiting picture that was put out there and, says, and that guy really looked sharp on it. So, and I wanted to look sharp too because at 16, that's what you're uh, about. I went down to the post office and joined up, and I figured I could get in right away. They'd be taking me, but uh, I was 16, and uh, uh, I was uh, small. Uh, I weighed 128 pounds, and 16. Well, that's two strikes against me right there because 17 was the minimum age, and uh, 135, I think it was a that was a uh, uh, minimal, minimal uh, weight. So I went to uh, my mother and I told her, my dad says, well, says, you eat a lot of bananas and says, and that'll bring your weight up real quick. And says, and then uh, uh, mom can work on uh, the uh, uh, age thing. So she got her, her sister, who was a notary public, to find a uh, thing it called a delayed birth certificate. And she moved the age uh, on that to December 5th, which was my younger son's, uh, younger brother's uh, birthday. And then uh, mine was in July, so I was about six months uh, up. So we got that and we signed it, and my mother signed it, and my aunt signed it, and my father signed it. And uh, I took it in there, back over to him, and he says, well, says, that's pretty good. Says, uh, we can accept you, but says we don't have anybody else that's that are listening right now. Says we'll have to wait until we get a train load or something before we can uh, send you off. So I went home and uh, waited, and pretty soon, uh, I, seven days later, well, he says we have uh, uh, about uh, 
uh, three more people that have signed up, and, and uh, so we'll take them and uh, put them on the next train that comes through uh, from uh, back east. So I waited, and uh, a couple of days, so here comes the train. They called me up, and I went over. I signed up. My mother and father uh, okayed it. And that was the uh, reason I, uh, I got in that way. And so, therefore, I had to take and use December the 5th, uh, uh, 1924, as my Marine Corps birthday, I'll call it. And then uh, after that, uh, from from that day on, I always used December the 5th, 1924. And uh, I used that until I uh, signed up for Social Security when I was uh, 65. And she says, well, son, says you could have uh, had your uh, Social Security six months ago. I says, I know, but I lied about my age and that wasn't my real age and I didn't want to be uh, accused of trying to get my uh, back pay on Social Security. She says, don't worry about it. She says, a lot of soldiers and sailors and Marines did that during that time of war. So we'll just change it on this. And so says, you're back to July the 5th, 1925. Well, I've been asked a lot of uh, uh, questions on how uh, I earned those two purple hearts on it. And uh, first, um, my first really uh, large combat, uh, actually after I had gotten out of the Raiders and into the uh, uh, third division, third Marine division on it. My, one of my first uh, combat actions was to liberate Guam. And Guam was one of the first uh, uh, action that I had taken with the third Marine division. Well, on as soon as we landed on uh, on uh, Guam that evening, there was uh, we had a uh, bonsai attack, and we had to fight hand to hand for uh, oh, I think it was probably about three hours on it, and we dispatched the, all of those uh, Japanese and. And then four days later on that, we were at uh, another part of uh, our Guam, which was over by Agat, or Agat, uh, and uh, which was one of the main uh, cities in on uh, Guam, and had a, uh, uh, another bonsai attack on. We had about 400 Japs that came down a hill behind tanks and they uh, uh, and I ran out of ammunition as I was fighting them and so I had to fight them with bayonets on it and we fought with bayonets for a while and then uh, uh, I came across a fellow that was a Japanese that was a, a, a pretty uh, agile and he pushed me back toward, uh, at on, on, near a foxhole that I was digging, and I tripped as and I fell. He stabbed me in the stomach, and I got uh, a wound in uh, my uh, stomach at that time. And uh, a, uh, I bled pretty, pretty much, but... Uh, we patched, uh, the corpsman patched me up and then put it, uh, 
uh, and I just kept on uh, fighting. We got rid of those uh, Japanese as well. So uh, that was the first uh, Purple Heart that I had received on it, and this, and uh, I was I stayed on uh, on Guam, uh, bivouacked, and about four months and training for our next uh, f flight and uh, uh, action by with the third division. And I was in the 21st uh, Marines Battalion, February 23rd, 1945. We were fighting on uh, uh, airfield number two and we had been fighting there for by about three days, and uh, almost constant, uh, constantly at that time on it. And uh, I got hit in the head with a piece of shrapnel or a, uh, or a uh, rifle slug. One of the two, I never did see it. It knocked me out for about five minutes. The 28th, uh, Company, 5th Division, reached the, the pinnacle of Mount Suribachi and uh, they cleared the top of it and then uh, they raised the small flag on top of the Mount uh, Suribachi. And by that time I had uh, awakened and I saw that as well on it. And then we continued to fight on down toward the end of uh, airfield number two. And uh, about two hours later, around 11 o'clock, I think it was, on it, that uh, somebody said that they rest of the people can't see it down there because it's too small of a flag, so we'll raise another flag up. So go down and get a larger, larger flag. So one of the men of the 28th Company went down to one of the ships, and in fact, he fought his way down on him because as he was going down, he had been fired upon on it. And received the uh, uh, flag from one of the people on board that ship. He brought it back up to the top. They took the first flag down and put the second flag up. And as they was putting the second flag up, the, uh, the photographer arranged the uh, people to uh, put the uh, uh, flag in a larger mound so that it would be, they could stand, stand the big pole. They found a big piece of pipe up there and stuck it down in that hole and then raised the flag. And that was the picture that was taken and is so uh, publicized. And uh, we use it now as a, a guide. And, uh, <laughs> And when they raised that flag up, more people saw it, and the horns and the whistles and everything from all the ships. There was 450 ships in the harbor waiting, and they started blowing the horn. But we thought the flag, we thought the uh, uh, mountain had been uh, uh, taken over, and uh, Iwo Jima was uh, uh, through fighting and. And so did the Japanese. They thought they had won or... Anyway, it was a lot of confusion. And finally we found out that it was just uh, the flag going up and all the uh, people were uh, real proud of our uh, Marines who uh, participated in that. And that was uh, uh, on the uh, 20... Third, about 11 o'clock, 1945. And then I went on from there, I went on to, and I lost uh, track of my uh, T-34 
two other uh, guys in my uh, my squad, and uh, I found them over on the other side of Mount Chir on the other side of the airfield number two, on it. just the three of us left in the whole company. So I fought with them with uh, them by. Uh, a general or some or a high colonel came by and picked us up and put us in with the fourth division because they needed extra uh, help. They needed all the uh, life people they could get to uh, take over uh, the uh, radio station and uh, there on at the very end of uh, the runway on uh, I, uh, on uh, airfield number two. So we took that over and went on over to the other two uh, hill number uh, 632 and then 832. And on 832 then uh, my uh, I got uh, uh, in with the, as I said, the fourth, the fourth, I think on it was the fourth because I didn't, but I didn't know the people on it. So, uh, by the way, I got shot as I was going over the little hill there, and uh, I was the uh, I was sprayed across my chest with uh, a Nambu 25 machine gun. And it went through my chest, went in through the muscle on my left arm, and uh, I was out. And I was out for the rest of the uh, fighting over there. But they went back to. Uh, I was walking wounded on it, but uh, I had to hold on to somebody so, on it, to get out of there on it. It was. Uh, to get back to the aid station, please. Uh, but uh, the we had uh, my scout and my uh, VA Arman and myself were the last two of the uh, Company Fox. I think uh, I think all of the uh, Fox Company was killed on it. I think I might be just the only one left now. So, and I think there's only two of us left in, in the uh, in the Raider Battalion that I can that I knew of. I found out. And as an uh, interesting fact on it, as I said, I was in the 21st Marines, uh, 21st Division uh, of the. Uh, Third, third uh, division, twenty-first Marines of the third division, um, and uh, the uh, my company produced the last man to receive a Medal of Honor came from my company. To earn, you have to be wounded uh, in combat is the uh, one of the criterias on it, like that. Uh, whether if it's a scratch on your leg, which uh, uh, I know of one fellow that got a scratch on his leg and uh, from uh, uh, running up against a piece of large metal as he was going up the uh, Mount Sarabachi. And uh, he received a, uh, 
uh, an award, a Purple Heart Award. So it's, uh, it drew blood and it was a wound. So, but uh, there's a lot of people that uh, uh, tried to get uh, a Purple Heart that uh, they were just, uh, uh, at that time they call it combat fatigue, but there's PTSD on it now. On it. But they couldn't get that on it. It, uh, so there was a lot of controversy on that thing. Special operations uh, are, are uh, for people that go in usually before the uh, the main force of uh, a uh, a combat or a operation on it, and uh, they have. Uh, there's do things that are special and uh, are not considered uh, uh, an ordinary uh, fighting uh, marine. So they created a uh, special forces, which were the uh, which were the uh, called the raiders. And they were taken, they were, the idea was taken from England and their uh, uh, rangers, I think they were called on it. So uh, President uh, uh, Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt, uh, President Franklin D. Roosevelt uh, decided that he would like to have one similar to the Rangers on it, and they were uh, so done. So we had his son, Jimmy Roosevelt, was my commanding officer, and I was picked out of uh, our company to uh, participate in the Raiders because of my uh, attitude toward uh, fighting and uh, I was uh, uh, my I was very good at killing with a knife I was very good at, at fighting with a uh, bayonet uh, I was very good uh, fighting with uh, a 20 millimeter uh, anti-aircraft uh, rifle. I was very fortunate in, when I was going to boot camp, I had a sergeant and two corporals on it. And each one of those, uh, one of those three, three were a, really an expert teacher at, one was bayonet, one was uh, knife fighting, and, uh, and the judo. Uh, Except they they call it judo at the time, which was just hand-to-hand -hand, uh, fighting uh, and uh, the art of self-defense uh, or whatever. Anyway, they uh, taught us and two or three days on each uh, at it, and so uh, they were very good at it, and uh, uh, we were very fortunate in getting. Uh, the expert teaching at that time and boot camp, and I carried it on further. So when uh, they sent uh, 
uh, sergeants, gunny sergeants, uh, and uh, a, a second lieutenant out uh, to different bases looking for people that uh, had those type of uh, uh, training, well, then uh, uh, they picked me out of uh, the whole, uh, out of, there's four of us went from, I think it was, from, uh, from Astoria, Oregon, Tongue Point Naval Air Station on it. And uh, we went for further training in, to uh, San Diego, and we were the 4th Raider Battalion. There was 1st and 2nd Raider Battalion, and they were already over on Guadalcanal. And uh, then, then the 3rd and 4th would be uh, 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 carried forward to as uh, reserves. And we for, then we went, we, we graduated out of Raider training, which took us uh, uh, a long time. I don't remember exactly right now. Uh, the, and uh, we left on, and went through Raider training at San Diego. We went through what is called a combat course. And uh, uh, our, f our 4th Marine Raiders designed the uh, combat course that every Marine that goes overseas and went in, was going into combat from then on had to go through that course. We designed the course and we had to go, go through the course twice to make sure we were doing it right and that how long it took and they put it down. We, the 4th Raider Battalion left San Diego on February the 9th, 1942 on uh, and uh, the It was 17 at that time. Yes, it was 17, I think. All right. And I was small, agile, muscular. All right. uh, I had an attitude, and that's what they wanted. And, uh, and the course was a hard course on it. But as I say, that's, and they still have that. And of course, they have since. Uh, put, uh, they've added a few things uh, onto it because uh, remember, uh, and in that particular time, uh, we were, uh, as I said, the first and the second raiders were already on Guadalcanal, and Guadalcanal was a, uh, a, a, a jungle and so therefore, we did a lot of, uh, back in San Diego when we were uh, training, we were training things that particularly uh, adhered to jungle fighting. And so we were fighting uh, and being trained as jungle fighters. And uh, it was, uh, uh, and that was the way that the Marines were training at that particular time in 1942 uh, um, and 43. They were training as jungle fighters. And after that, our uh, missions on some of the things on February, uh, after the raiders broke up, they became uh, uh, on, uh, they needed 
more open fighting and not any jung jungle fighting on it like that. Now, I, I've been asked that. Uh, uh, you have a lot of medals on it, but which one do you like best? So, uh, I, first, I was more proud of my Purple Hearts that I did get on it, uh, but uh, I'm also very proud of my combat action. Uh, I was in f uh, five combat actions uh, on it, and I wear uh, a symbol of that particular thing, and the combat action medals are, uh, are kind of cherished with, uh, for, the, uh, for the Marines, uh, the, and uh, I had, uh, I had the privilege of being in uh, in the right place at the right time, and so uh, and uh, they finally. Uh, I tried to stay with the with the uh, Marines and uh, fighting in the Pacific as long as I could, but uh, the last one got me on it on Iwo Jima on it. But there was Guadalcanal, there was New Georgia, uh, Rice Anchorage, uh, Van Guna, Guam, and Iwo Jima. When you go through things, uh, I would say not not only myself but others. I'm sure have the same feeling, but uh, you have a uh, a strong feeling about uh, something, and like raising the flag on Mount Suribachi on it, and. That's that's very important for just saying that, but raising the flag means that a lot of guys had to be killed, wounded, to get that flag up there, and uh, they had to fight going up there, and then to get the second flag up up there, they had to fight to get down to the. Uh, ship to uh, find a larger flag on it, and you say, "Well, that's not really against the enemy, but that means a lot to those that are out there fighting on it, and uh, they mean a lot. They mean m more to me, uh, and and that uh, I did not see them raise the flag, but I saw the flag up there." Uh, when they were raising it, and I saw the flag after, and I, uh, I saw the larger flag, which was up about two hours or so on it, and that gave me a thrill to see that. I, and I, it also gave the thrill to all those uh, ships out there that were blowing their horns and stuff. They were happy to see, and they were happy for us that we did that. And, now, when I see something like that, I see that, well, yeah, this is a nice memorial to have a flag up there, but uh, I still see that, and I still m remember some of the guys that uh, 
uh, that I had known uh, that didn't come back. And they're, uh, so that's an honor but bestowed upon the 28th to get up there and to see that. And, and it's an honor for us, I think. And it's, and it's an honor that my, my country got something that was so important up there. And they realized that, and, and because now, They've got a memorial there going up to South Mount Suribachi on it. And uh, I have some sand that came from that uh, where the flag is on it. Uh, people that have gone back over to Iwo Jima and uh, brought back uh, some sand and shared it with me. And uh, that means something on it. So. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of people uh, uh, should realize that, that, oh, that's pretty, you know, it's really nice. But they got to remember that a, a hell of a lot of people had to be killed to get up there and get those, uh, get that flag in there, too. Well, when you're fighting, you know, you're fighting and killing and uh, blood and guts and all that kind of stuff, uh, it, uh, it means a lot. And then when you see your flag and you see your, that's what you're fighting for, really. That's a representation of your country. And uh, gosh, I had uh, uh, three years of, uh, of that and two years of fi fighting. I was over, over in, the, in the Pacific for uh, two years, for two years, two months, and 26 days on it, and fighting in five uh, or more places on it, and then uh, you, you you know that's for your country, and you and you then you see the flag up there, and that's a representation of my country. And of which I was fighting for, and I, I get really shook, uh, and uh, uh, it, uh, and I'm sure I'm, I'm not only me. It's, I'm sure that the other uh, guys that uh, uh, were, but heck, heck, when you're fighting, especially on that airfield number two, I was fighting with rocks, uh, shovels, uh, knives and uh, anything I could get because it was, uh, uh, it was so, uh, uh, so horrible on it. So, but uh, that's, uh, it means a lot. And that says a lot on it. What do you think of uh, your uh, your country? Now, I was asked this once. Once I uh, said, uh, "Why? Uh, what do you? What are you really fighting for on it? Were you mad at them or not?" But no, I wasn't mad at them uh, on it. Uh, but the uh, the world affairs were a lot different at that particular time, I think, on it. Uh, we were fighting to end the war. We were, uh, we didn't have, uh, uh, I don't think, now I'm, I was a corporal and uh, I had no idea and I felt no animosity against the Japanese or anything, but I was fighting because First thing, that was my job. And the second thing, you know, 
Uh, if I don't kill them, they're going to kill me. But they're with the, and, uh, but I, now this is my own opinion on, and I don't, uh, I want to say that uh, I think we could help other people on it that, uh, that are in the war, not only there, but uh, at the same time, remember, there is the uh, people over in, uh, uh, in Europe were fighting at the same time. Germany was fighting, uh, Russia was fighting on it. Uh, and their agenda was to a lot different than what our agenda was as far as I'm concerned on it. We were fighting on it because we were wanted the war to end and we wanted the uh, and we wanted to stay alive and see it ended on it. And some of the other countries were fighting to attain more territory. And uh, uh, the world uh, was fighting for different purposes, I think, on it. Now, again, my opinion on it. But uh, uh, I didn't give a hoot about what, uh, uh, what the uh, world was doing at that particular time. All I wanted, I wanted to go home and see Mama. That was my, at that time, that was my, uh, my role in the whole thing on it. I was born to be a fighter and I, I did a good job and I, I feel proud of myself on it. So uh, that was, uh, and I hope that uh, uh, I'm able to continue on doing that on it. I'm 97 years old now, and I hope to go further than that uh, on it. In 1941, when the war when it started, I went into the Marine Corps. 1942 on it, January the 21st on it. Uh, I I went overseas. I got out in 1946 on it, and I spent four years and four years and a day in the Marine Corps on it. And the reason I say four years in one day is because the uh, the end of uh, uh, my uh, marine life supposedly ended on Sunday, and the office was closed, so they couldn't give me a a uh, uh, discharge papers. Uh, until January the 22nd. The people have asked me a lot about uh, the, uh, what do I think about uh, how things are going now over in uh, uh, the, in Europe and all, and uh, what, uh, what and how are we doing in it, on it? Well, my, uh, my opinion, again, is that we can help as long as we can, but keep our boys home. 
Don't send them out there to fight somebody else's war on it. If they attacked us, hell, go after them and, uh, and do that. But uh, don't send them uh, someplace uh, foreign to, uh, to fight and to fight uh, their war. This is, that wasn't our war. The, uh, our war was really on World War II at first, of course. We were protecting our butts, and I, by golly, says, we can go in there and, and change that ourselves. You so had something to fight for, but you have a, some place that you've never heard of on it, and they take them, uh, they go over into Vietnam and those other foreign places and start fighting on it. Hell, that's their, uh, that's their, uh, uh, their fight, not our fight on it. They didn't. But they, uh, their answer to that was, uh, yeah, but if we don't, they'll be going to come, uh, next thing, they'll be trying to take us over, and they'll be coming. Well, that's their business. It's not your business on it. And I think you've got you to fight what, you're, what you, uh, you, you need to fight. You know, change, change the world. You're not going to change the world at all on it like that. But... Uh, these kids that went over there at 19, 17, 18, 19, like that, uh, and a place they've never been before, never heard of before, uh, like that, and and start fighting, and uh, and the type of fighting that they did, or the things that they did over there, are really were uh, against the uh, word of their religion as well. So uh, keep them home. Uh, and that's what our military role should be. be. Um, if they if they fight us, we fight back on it. But uh, nah, we can give them all f money, uh, ammunition, and things of this nature, and help. But uh, yeah. and we're not going to change anything. If they they'll they're going to uh, they're going to fight against us no matter what on it. And they still will, and they still are on it. Just look at the, the things that are going over in, in Russia on it. Like that. And what? He wants, he wants his land, and that's what they're fighting for on it. And the reason they want Ukraine is, uh, uh, again, they want because that's uh, the, the largest store in the, in the world for nuclear stuff on it. They have the resorts and in, 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 uh, Ukraine. So, uh, again, let's don't uh, send our boys away and fight. Fight for home. I'm a casualty of World War II on it. And uh, I came home with a bad attitude. Uh, and they called it PTSD on it. I, I, I tear up now. I cry. I cry a lot because of my uh, past life on it and the things that I did that I'm sorry for on it. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it's hard for me to communicate sometime with them. But I found an uh, a, uh, answer to that and that was to join a great club, which is the Stockton Marine Corps Club, and they treat me like a king there. And they treat me about anything I want and stuff, they are there. They're, they help me on it. My attitude has changed a lot, and uh, I've, done, I've done things that, uh, uh, that I'm proud of on it. And I hope that they have as well on it, but it's uh, uh, 
my life has changed. Of course my life has changed because my, my wife passed away two years ago and she was, uh, we had been married for 74 years. On a, we had a lot of uh, good times together and we had bad times. Well, and any, any person has like that. But uh, the Stockton Ring Corps Club was one of the best, and one of the best things that had happened to me on it. And I feel very proud to be a Marine, more proud than I had before because of the work that they have done, not only for myself, but for the other veterans as well. Well, uh, one thing about the, the Stockton Marine Corps Club on it, they're Marines uh, on it. 90% of them, I think, are actually Marines on it. Some of them are, are not. Uh, there, uh, there are veterans on it. But uh, the Marines uh, have a standard saying, once a Marine, always a Marine. And uh, I would recommend, if you're going into a service, don't go into it just because of the uniform on it now, like I did, because uh, I wear one now, I wear my uniform proudly on it, and uh, because I'm a proud Marine on it, not an ex-Marine, I'm a proud Marine on it, and the uh, each one of the services that are offered, Air Force, Army, Coast Guard, uh, and the Navy, and the Space, they, they help one another. And for as the Marines are concerned on it, uh, they couldn't operate properly unless they had the Navy, because the Navy was the one that, uh, that took you to all of these islands and all these other places. And part of the Navy is, is the Seabees. And boy, they eat good. So that's one of the things there, the Navy with their Seabees on it. In fact, if you, if you put it uh, this way, the, on every island that the Marines went, the Navy as a whole, took us there. Part of that Navy is the uh, CBs, which is con means construction battalion on it. And they go uh, immediately after the Marines take the island or uh, However, on Iwo Jima, it was the first time in all the islands that we had fought there, the, the Seabees went in with the first landing force. They were in about the fourth boat that hit the island on it. And that was, uh, uh, they, they were used at that particular time, they had, they were, used for the, uh, repairing the airport, the air uh, uh, field there on it. But uh, it turned out there were so many casualties, they were, uh, they were put, picking up the parts of, uh, of the Marines where they had been blasted by uh, artillery shells on it and putting them in bags on it. So. That was part of their job at that particular time. That wasn't anything to do with the construction thing, but they were there to help the Marines on it. So it's, uh, it's something that, uh, that we are proud of on it. And if they weren't there to pick up the parts and, and move the stuff that had been blown apart, my outfit, which is the 21st Marine, would not have been able to land and help the uh, fourth and fifth division in there.
One of the things we have on it, in, in the Marines on it, and should be in all of the, uh, the uh, fighting uh, craft of uh, services, is honor and, and courage uh, on it, and, and commitment. Uh, honor to do the right thing, courage do it without fear. And commitment is always do it. Yeah. Okay.